Okay, so let's start with exocrine pancreas and we would understand the congenital anomalies and the pancreatitis in this part. Now, before we move further, uh, why not subscribe the channel, guys? It helps me a lot and uh, motivates me to keep uploading these videos. Okay, now recall that pancreas is a retroperitoneal organ and it develops from the um, two primordia, the dorsal and the ventral pancreatic primordia, um, which are the outpouchings of the foregut that fuse together to form the um, pancreas. Now, the ventral part of the primordia basically forms the main pancreatic duct and what's near to the main pancreatic duct is the head but particularly the inferior posterior portion um, is formed by the ventral bud rest of everything is formed by dorsal pancreatic bud so it's easy to remember okay main pancreatic duct and the inferior posterior head formed by ventral rest all formed by dorsal now once again um, if we think that we have the duodenum the c loop of the duodenum and we know that the pancreas is the organ which is retroperitoneal and it is um, just enrolling the duodenum so if the formation of the pancreas is in such a way that it encircles the duodenum um, it can cause the uh, annular pancreas and obviously that may cause the duodenal obstruction now one thing to be kept in mind is that it's particularly the second part of the duodenum that is mostly involved the next one is pancreatic divism as the name suggests divism means um, the pancreas is divided now what happens is that we have failure of fusion of dorsal and ventral pancreatic primordia okay so that's the main thing so what would happen is that how would the pancreatic drain um, the pancreas would drain because the main pancreatic duct is formed by the ventral and uh, all the structures are mainly formed by dorsal okay so that's the main um, pathology over here and the dorsal pancreatic duct would have a problem in draining and that may um, usually there are some small pancreatic ducts via the uh, via which the pancreas drain but usually they get clogged and that may lead to acute pancreatitis so increased susceptibility of acute pancreatitis and uh, it's the most common congenital pancreatic anomaly um, that's high yield pancreas may also be present uh, away from its normal location forming ectopic pancreas the most common sites are stomach and duodenum so the next one is pancreatitis and the basic problem in pancreatitis is that we have auto digestion keep this in back of your mind now in pancreatitis what happens is that itis means inflammation obviously but uh, most of the enzymes of the pancreas you know are secreted in um, inactivated form um, they are called as proenzymes now one of them is lipases and you know lipase um, cleaves the fat so what is going to do is that if in active form um, secreted within the pancreas it's going to destroy the pancreatic structures the phospholipid membranes and all those structures now this is the main thing which is happening it causes fat necrosis this fat necrosis triggers the inflammation and those inflammation induce the microvascular leaks and the interstitial edema and all those uh, drama of inflammation so all those uh, manifestations would cause the pancreatitis now once uh, these enzymes are in activated form um, they would obviously damage the nearby structures also one of the important enzyme is trypsin um, high to be aware of trypsin activates all other enzymes um, okay and enterokinase uh, secreted from the small intestine particularly duodenum um, activates the trypsin okay the um, uh, spink one gene is uh, also important for the um, pancreatitis and it's it's actually serine protease inhibitor of kajal one um, it's trypsin inhibitor so you can think that obviously that would prevent pancreatitis and mutation in that would lead to pancreatitis susceptibility to increase okay acute pancreatitis reversible parenchymal injury now this is particularly high yield because reversible term um, is actually point of differentiation with the chronic one the chronic is irreversible injury to the pancreas now the etiology is behind the acute would be the biliary tract disease and alcohol being most common amongst male while gallstones being most common amongst female trauma is more common amongst children um, any injury um, let's say the road traffic accident injury to the child would lead to acute pancreatitis okay now if we have our pancreas and uh, we talk of its enzyme then they are secreted in inactivated form so uh, enzymes are not going to damage the pancreatic parenchyma but let's say if we stop this flow from the duct what will happen is that the enzyme would stay over there for a long period of time and then they would get activated so that would lead to pancreatic digestion uh, moreover if the the enzymes are not able to transport uh, from the duct then also they may accumulate finally the any inflammation or trauma 
to the nearby structures may also lead to the acinar injury which would cause premature activation of the enzymes and that would in turn lead to auto digestion and inflammation um, IL-1 particularly important and IL-6 are mainly associated with the um, pancreatitis. Now, a uh, classic feature of the pancreatitis is that it is associated with liquefactive necrosis and fat necrosis. This is very high to be aware of because um, the pancreatic parenchyma would undergo liquefactive necrosis, okay, while the surrounding fat would undergo fat necrosis and that is peripancreatic fat. In fact, the peripancreatic fat necrosis is associated with poor prognosis, okay. It's associated with poor prognosis because the... Um, the pancreatitis is so much that the, even the surrounding fat is getting destroyed. Now let's briefly overview the etiologies of the um, pathogenesis. That is the duct obstruction. Yes, obviously the all stones are more common amongst females and alcohol, which is more common to cause um, primary acinar injury amongst male. Now um, the alcohol has uh, different mechanisms. Usually it can directly damage to the acini or it may cause the contraction of the sphincter of OD. Then it may also cause the pancreatic fluid to clog within um, the ducts. Okay, so three mechanisms are there. Then uh, pancreatic cancer is also the cause for the ducts obstruction. Obviously you can uh, imagine that if the extra growth is there, then the duct may get obstructed. Ascaris, um, these are particularly high L bugs in uh, um, in the developing countries. Then we have the colidocosils. Mums, CMV and the scorpion string are very important um, for board questions. Then hypercalcemia, recall that um, paraneoplastic syndrome are more associated with hypercalcemia than hyperparathyroidism. Finally, the defective intracellular transport of enzymes may also cause the, the um, pancreatitis. Now trypsin, recall trypsin is activated by the enterokinase from duodenum and trypsin is actually the main um, enzyme that is going to activate all other enzymes. So it activates phospholipase that damages the fats and that fat damage causes fat necrosis. It uh, activates elastase that causes damage to elastic fibers. But in addition and high yield to be aware of, it also activates factor 12 and because of this, the small vessel thrombosis increases high to be aware of. Okay. Okay. One of the classical association is the cystic fibrosis patient with duct obstruction and pancreatitis. Now recall that cystic fibrosis has um, two defects in chloride pumping or in HCO3 minus pumping. Now, particularly when we talk about pancreas, we refer to the HCO3 minus. Now, if the HCO3 minus is not able to come in the lumen, then what is going to happen is that we have excess of positivity, um, cationic nature, and you know protein is in negative charge. So what is it going to do is it going to precipitate, okay? So protein and mucins, all of these structures precipitate and obstruct the lumen. Okay, they obstruct the lumen and that causes the increased risk of pancreatitis. In morphology, fat necrosis is going to be present because of phospholipase enzyme, um, microvascular leaks and edema because of IL-1 and IL-6, high to be aware of. Acute inflammation, obviously neutrophils would be present over there. The destruction of the blood vessels and interstitial hemorrhage because of elastase, um, the blood vessel would be damaged. Recall, um, elastic fibers are there, interstitial hemorrhage and uh, thrombosis may be there because of factor 12. So um, all of the things make up. Now classically, the pancreatitis patient present with epigastric pain radiating to back. Um, nausea vomiting is again one of the very classical sign of the pancreatitis. Serum amylase is um, the one of the tests for diagnostic and you know the serum amylase um, is uh, also dependent on the salivary gland amylase. So serum lipase would be more specific. Okay. Okay. Now chronic pancreatitis. In chronic pancreatitis, um, the damage is irreversible and irreversible damage of parenchyma would lead to fibrosis. Um, in the late stage, we have endocrine part involvement also. Now, the repeated bouts of the acute pancreatitis are actually the basic pathogenesis behind the chronic pancreatitis. Um, what, what it happens is that um, the acute pancreatitis would lead to duct distortion, the, the altered pancreatic secretion, fibrosis, um, all those destruction would accumulate and cause the chronic pancreatitis. Now, now fibrosis, we know TGF beta is involved in fibrosis, so that would lead to fibrosis related to growth factor that would lead to proliferation and this is very high to be aware of that who's proliferation peri acinar myofibroblast peri acinar myofibroblast also called pancreatic stellate cell okay so um, that's here now chronic alcoholism is one of the major factor 
for the risk of the chronic pancreatitis um, opiates are also high to be aware of because they increase the tone of sphincter of ori okay as i mentioned already um, the the pancreatitis patient would present with epigastric pain and nausea vomiting classically in acute one but here we are going to see jaundice and elevated alp now why jaundice jaundice because if the chronic uh, obstruction of the ducts are there then uh, those may also lead to formation of the um, obstruction of the bile duct and that would lead to gallstones so that may present with jaundice then the patient may have mild while certain set of patient may also have severe chronic pain weight loss is one of the classical feature then edema may also be there because the proteins are being lost or they are not being absorbed then pancreatic pseudocyst is a complication in chronic pancreatitis so with this we are done with the congenital anomalies and the pancreatitis part in the next lecture we will talk about the neoplasms of the pancreas hope you like the video guys subs if you loved it comment your queries down below in the comment section bye for now see you in the next one